Good morning. It is the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. And before we begin, I want to say just a very quick word of thanks. Elias Decoder, who has been filming and editing our Sunday morning services since the pandemic began, is leaving for university and won't be doing this anymore. And Elias, thank you for everything that you have done to make this possible. We begin our service. Sing to the Lord a new song. We will worship God our name. Let us praise our God with song and dance. For God is gracious and loving. Let us give our God glory and honor. For God deserves our praise. Holy One, God of grace and glory, your creative power is beyond imagining. Your love is wider than the whole universe, your mercy greater than the heights of heaven your wisdom deeper than the sea. Maker of all things, you became one of us in Jesus Christ and through your spirit, you are present with us in every place and every time. We worship you, creator, Christ and spirit, one God, now and always. And now in confidence and in honesty, let us confess our sins to God and one another as we say together, Although Christ is among us as our peace, we confess we are a people divided within ourselves and against each other. We cling to the values and habits of a broken world. The profit and pleasures we pursue harm creation and the lives of others. The fears and jealousies we harbor set neighbor against neighbor and nation against nation. The freedom and abundance we enjoy belong mostly to a few when they are God's gift to all. Have mercy upon us, O God. Heal us, forgive us, and set us free to serve you in the world as agents of your reconciling love in Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now the collect for today. Lord of all, you call a broken people around your table in times of disagreement. Teach us to listen. Loose us from prejudice, and bind us to your way of forgiving grace through Jesus Christ who stands at the heart of our gathering. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first months of the year for you you tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembly, assembled congregation of Israel, shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat, shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it, hurry, eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, and I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt 
both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord throughout your generations, and you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our canticle today is the Song of Peace from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In the days to come, the mountain of the house of the Lord shall tower as the highest of mountains and be raised above the hills. Then shall all the nations flow. Many people shall come and say, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, that we may walk in his paths. For the law shall go out from Zion, from Jerusalem, the word of the Lord. He shall judge between nations and decide for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning knives. Nations shall not lift sword against nation. They shall never train for war again. O people of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit, of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Those of you who have heard me preach many times, uh, will certainly know by now that I am something of a Walter Brueggemann groupie. Um, the fact is he is the rock star of Old Testament theologians and I have learned so much from him about the New Testament, the, the Old Testament and about the world that I'm living in, how it all comes together. And, and the book we're looking at now, the book of Exodus is so fundamental to everything everything that our faith is about. And, and it's a, a really a wonderful story. Uh, just prior to where we pick up today, uh, Moses and his brother Aaron had gone to Pharaoh uh, with, with the plea from God, set my, set my people free. <laughs> you got to let them go. And, and Pharaoh said, no, nobody makes bricks like the Israelites. They're not going anywhere. So Moses said, well, listen, at least let them come out and worship with me in the desert. Three days, they can worship their God. And, and, and Pharaoh said, no, those people are lazy, lazy, lazy. Isn't it amazing how even back then that, that the wealthy and the people who had everything said that the poor were lazy and that the poor were poor because they were lazy. In 3,000 years, nothing's changed. Anyway, when God heard that, it was like, okay, enough is enough. This is going to change. And, and what happens is over the next couple of chapters, there, there is a competition that sets forward, a competition between Pharaoh, who is the dominant figure in a violent, wealthy, oppressive, slave-owning culture, and Yahweh, who is relatively unknown, 
but who is the God of the poor and those who are forced to live on the margins. And, and what happens is a kind of a mano a mano thing. And, and it starts when Aaron throws down his rod on the ground and, and it turns to snakes. And, and he has one of those, let's see you taught that moment. And, and then Pharaoh brings in his magicians and they throw down their rods and, and they turn into snakes. And, and so we're in the middle of an anything you can do, I can do better thing. So, so Moses ha has Aaron whack the Nile River and it turns to blood and the fish start to die and hands on hips, they look at Pharaoh and he brings in his magicians. They whack the Nile, more blood, more dead fish. Okay, how about frogs? Let's see if you can deal with frogs, Pharaoh. So Aaron brings on the frogs. They are our frogs everywhere. They are coming out of everywhere. Pharaoh's magicians come in, more frogs. And then finally, and then finally, Aaron, with the help of God, makes gnats. I mean, we are talking gnats. And, and Pharaoh's magicians, they, they can't make gnats. They say, this is the finger of God. And at this moment, it's all over but the crying. The power of Pharaoh, the might of Pharaoh, the wealth of Pharaoh, the violence of Pharaoh is defeated by a gnat-making God. That's the story. And, and then we move to the beginning of our story today. And, and the, the exodus, it's about to happen. And, and we hear uh, the first line, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. What they're saying is, this is the first month of the beginning of the rest of your life. The exodus is about to happen. A new beginning is about to happen. A new creation is about to happen. So what you have to do is you gotta get ready for that. And he introduces them to a Passover meal. The Passover meal. Now, part of that was to, to put blood uh, on their door lintels so that they would be protected. But this meal that was introduced was a meal that was going to be shared forever and all time. And we hear the words, this day shall be a remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Throughout Exodus, throughout the book of Deuteronomy, the message comes, remember, remember, remember. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt. Remember what that felt like. Remember the narrative of your exodus from Egypt, your exodus from slavery. And remember the God who is at the center of that narrative. Remember that Yahweh, your God, is the God of the poor and the powerless. Remember that Yahweh, your God, is the only one to set you free from all of the pharaohs of this world. And remember that Yahweh, your God, is the only way forward to a future of new possibility. Remember, remember, remember. And a little while later in the Sinai, well, a long while later, after a very, very challenging trip, Moses does something which I'm sure would make him the scourge of altar guilds around the world. He takes a bucket of blood and throws it on the altar. Uh, and, and then he sprinkles the crowd with what is left of the blood and says, this is the blood of the covenant with Yahweh poured out for you. The deal has been sealed. The exodus will continue. They're going to make their way to the promised land and all is good. Okay, now let's move quickly to, to our gospel reading today. And listen, you gotta find the ties here. They gotta jump out at you, folks. They really do. We have, once again, a competition in the works between Yahweh, the God of the poor and the oppressed, and Caesar, the embodiment of wealth, power, of oppression, and violence. And in the center is Jesus, 
the human agent of God because God always uses human agency for exile. So Jesus brings his kingdom movement to Jerusalem just before the festival, the festival of Passover. There's no coincidence there, folks. And, and, and as he comes to town, he does two enacted parables. He comes to, to the city riding on a donkey. And then he overturns the tables of the money changers in the temple. That was his way of saying something big is about to happen. Buck, buckle up, folks. Buckle up. God is here. God is present. So it's all going to change. And then he celebrates dinner, the Passover, with his disciples. And, and remember, at this meal, they're not there with beer and pizza. They are celebrating the same Passover that had been celebrated for a thousand years. And in that celebration, eating that Passover meal, they would have been retelling and remembering that they were once slaves in Egypt, remembering the story of their escape, remembering that God who was the center of the story. And then Jesus, by about the third glass of wine, says, this is my body given for you. And then listen to the words, this is the blood of my covenant poured out for you. What he's saying is a new exodus is about to happen. A new way forward to a better way of life is about to happen. And, and the cross on Golgotha was going to be the place where the, where the might and the power and the violence of Caesar was defeated by the son of a gnat-making God. And, and for the last 2,000 years, whenever people have gathered together to celebrate the Eucharist, and God knows we'll begin to do that again next week, the words that we hear are remember, 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 remember the story of Jesus and his kingdom mission. Remember the story of his life, his death, and his resurrection. And remember the God who is at the center of that narrative. Remember, remember, remember. Well, folks, whenever we fail to remember, really remember, or when we remember the story, but twist it to our own hopes and desires, inevitably we fall once again into the grips of Pharaoh because Pharaoh is insidious and ubiquitous. Pharaoh is everywhere. Watch the news tonight. If you do not see Pharaoh, watch it again, because Pharaoh's there. Watch the news today. If you do not see images of the poor, of the oppressed, of those who are forced to live on the margins, screaming out, crying out for help and for freedom and respect, watch it again because they're there. Watch the news tonight. If you do not see images of a world that has given its itself over to the pursuit of wealth, of stuff, of personal happiness, with no thought to the cost of everyone else, with no thought to the cost of our planet, then watch again. It is everywhere. We have developed religious amnesia. And the only answer is to remember, remember, remember. Remember our story. Remember the victory. Remember our liberation. And remember the God who is at the center of that story. It is our only way forward.
Amen. Say together the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commander greater than these. Creator of heaven and earth, lover of each and every soul, we are filled with gratitude for the blessings of this life. For making us in your image to love and care for one another, we give you thanks. For the gift of Christ who redeems and guides us and who gives us a pattern for everyday living, we praise you. Hear us now as we pray for situations where your love and grace are sorely needed in the world you love. We pray for our church in this place, for Terry, Dale and Brennan, for Bishop Todd and for the clergy and people of the Diocese of Huron, and for all churches around the world facing so many new challenges in responding to so many enduring needs. Lord, in your love. Hear our prayer. We pray for this beautiful planet, the fragile home we share with all living things. Give us the will and the wisdom to preserve it for future generations. Lord, in your love. Hear our prayer. 
We pray for those who govern in our city, our province, our country and the nations of the world, that they may find the wisdom and courage to do justice in the decisions they make, and that they might inspire those in their care to do what is right and what is wise in these challenging times. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who serve as teachers, healers and caregivers, who are facing new situations this fall, and for all students who return to school in very different circumstances, that you will guide and protect them. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. We pray for the homeless and the hungry, for the unemployed and the anxious, and for all who have become more vulnerable through the pandemic, that they might find help and hope. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. We pray for those who mourn and those who are alone or feeling isolated, that they might find comfort and strength in their pain and struggle. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. We pray for the powerless and the oppressed, and those caught up in destructive relationships or unjust political systems. Help them to know that they are not alone as they look for a way forward. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. We pray for the concerns we bear on our hearts and fret about in our minds this day. Give us strength, give us guidance, give us peace. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we thank you for those who have gone before us and showed us some measure of your eternal love. Keep us always in communion with you and with your people from every time and place. And now, joining our prayers and praises together, we pray in the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace and hope, and courage and love. Now the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you love and pray for today, tomorrow and forever. Amen. Amen.